Welcome to part 8 of the Spring Boot microservices series. So in the previous video, we saw how to implement distributed tracing in our application. Now let's go ahead and see how to implement event-driven architecture in our microservices project. Right. So before we continue, so let's understand what exactly is event-driven architecture. Right. So uh, in our order service, we have we are communicating with the inventory service in a synchronous manner. Right. Like we are making a HTTP request to the order service to place an order, and the order service is again calling the inventory service using the HTTP request again using the REST API using the REST call. Right. So this kind of communication, as we know, is called a synchronous communication. The order service will call the inventory service and it will wait for the response from the inventory service. Once it receives the response, it will send it back to the user. Right. So this is called as synchronous communication. We can have, we will have, we can have another kind of communication called as asynchronous communication where the order service will make a request to the inventory service and it will not wait for the response. Right. So it will just fire the request and it will forget about the response. So this kind of communication is called as asynchronous communication. This kind of asynchronous communication can be enabled by using event driven architecture. There's nothing but performing asynchronous communication with the form of events, right? So whenever we receive an order to our order service and the order is placed successfully, our order service will raise an event. So in this uh, scenario, it can be like an order placed event and we can place this order placed event object as a message inside the Kafka broker and our notification service, which is the consumer, your order service will be a producer of the message and the notification service will be a consumer. So it will consume this message and will process this message accordingly, right? So usually if you want to implement the functionality, it's like sending out notifications either in the form of email or SMS. We're not going to implement this uh, functionality in the notification service. So what we're going to do in this part is to set up this event driven architecture, right? So now let's go ahead and install Kafka in our local machine. So for the installation, we are going to use Docker and Docker Compose to create the Docker containers. So for this, I'm going to first open the Apache Kafka quick start guide from Confluent developer website. So here I'm just going to select the option Docker. And the first thing we are going to do is to copy the, the Docker Compose file because we already have the Docker Compose file ready inside this uh, Confluent developer website. So what I'm going to do is in the setup Kafka broker section, I'm just going to copy this whole file and I'm going to open my IDE and in the root folder, I'm going to right click and click on new file. And I'm going to name this file as docker-compose.yaml. Let's add it to the Git repository and I'm just going to paste in the whole code, which I've copied from the Confluent developer website. So in this Docker Compose file, we are using a version three and we are mainly downloading two services. The first one is Zookeeper. For Zookeeper is used to orchestrate the Kafka clusters. So we need a Zookeeper instance to, to orchestrate the Kafka cluster, even if you are just using a single Kafka cluster. So we have defined the Docker image from Confluent Inc. So we're using the version 7.0.1. And the container name we are defining as Zookeeper. And uh, we are also providing a couple of environment variables. The first one is Zookeeper client port. So we are defining the port as 2181. And uh, Zookeeper tick time has 2000 milliseconds. This tick time is nothing but the uh, interval with which it will send the Zookeeper will send heartbeat messages, right? So this is something similar to what Eureka is doing. Like we have this heartbeat messages for every 10 seconds. So similarly, Zookeeper, we can also configure this tick time Zookeeper as 2000 milliseconds. Uh, next, we have the Apache Kafka broker itself. So this uh, uh, Kafka is called as broker is de is defined by the time by the tag called broker. So we are using again the Docker image from Confluent Inc. and with version as 7.0.1. The container name, we are defining it as broker. And uh, we are also defining the ports on which this Kafka cluster will run. So the single node cluster will run. So we're using this 9092 port and we are also exposing this port out of the Docker container. We don't need this comment. So I'm just going to remove this comment. 
and this um, apache kafka container also depends on the zookeeper container so that's why uh, after the zookeeper container is up and running so we will also start with the our kafka container and lastly we also have the environment variables we have the broker id set as one we have the environment variable for kafka zookeeper connect so here we are just referring to the container of zookeeper by first referring the the container name as zookeeper as if we defined here followed by the the port so is 2181 as we defined inside the zookeeper client port environment variable and lastly we also have this kafka listener security protocol map environment variable uh, which is uh, defining the, the the listener security protocol. We are using this plain text and and uh, plain text internal. And we also have the Kafka advertised listeners. So these are all the listeners which are configured inside our Kafka cluster, and it's also sent as a metadata to the clients. We are defining it in the plain text format. We are defining it as localhost 9092, and also we are defining it using the host name as plain text internal. 29092 as this is a single node kafka instance we are setting this offset topic replication we can do as one and also this transaction state uh, isr as one and also the transaction state log replication factor as one because we are setting it as one because we are just using a single node here if you are using multiple nodes in a cluster you may want to also change these values to the to suit the number of instances you have so this is how this so this is the configuration of docker compose so to download the docker images and to run the docker containers what we can do is i'm going to open the terminal and make sure you are in the root folder and you can type docker space compose up minus d right so press enter so the first thing it will do is it will first check whether the image is existing in your machine or not. If not, it will first try to download and it will start the containers. As I already have the images on my machine, it's not downloading. So when you're running this command, maybe it will download this image and it will take some more time. But you can see that these two containers are started and you can also verify that they are running fine or not by running the command docker ps. And you can see that these two containers are up and running successfully. You can also verify the logs of our Kafka broker by typing docker logs minus F. And I'm going to define, I'm going to add the name of the Kafka broker. And you can see that the logs looks fine. There are no errors. So that means our Kafka broker is up and running successfully. So now we can go ahead and configure Kafka in our order service. All right, so now let's discuss about the Spring framework, which we are going to use to integrate with Apache Kafka. So the library is called as Spring for Apache Kafka. So this Spring for Apache Kafka project applies core Spring concepts to the development of Kafka based message solutions. It provides a template as a high level abstraction for sending messages. It also provides support for message driven POJOs with Kafka listener annotations and a listener container. So this is the description which we have inside the Spring project website. So what is going to what it says is like, of course, we are going to use this library to you know, use it inside our Spring Boot projects. And we are going to and Spring and this project is mainly going to um, provide the functionality using a class called as a Kafka template class. So using this Kafka template class, our producers, in our case, this order service can send the messages to our consumers. In, our, in this case, it's the notification service and the consumer side and from the consumer side, we can define this consumer like this notification service as a listener by adding this Kafka listener annotation. So we can use all these features inside our project to integrate with Kafka from our Spring Boot projects. So let's go ahead and install this library in our project. So for that, I'm just going to click on the tab learn and I'm going to click on the reference documentation section. And in here, I'm just going to scroll down until I find the dependency information. So under the quick door, you can just copy this dependency information under Maven 
and I'm going to open the project in my ID and I'm going to copy this dependency inside the pom.xml of the order service class. I'm going to paste it in here, order service project and and let's click on this load maven changes icon and the next thing I'm going to do is to configure our order service to configure our order service to listen to the Kafka broker which is running on our machine. So for that I'm going to open source main resources application the properties. I'm just going to scroll down until the end of the properties file and in here I'm going to add the property add the comment as Kafka properties and I'm going to type in spring dot Kafka bootstrap servers. So these are the list of servers where we can find Kafka installation. So as we are using a local installation, we can just provide the URL as localhost 9092, right? After adding this property, Kafka will be automatically configured in our Spring Boot project. The next thing we can do is I'm going to open the Java folder and inside the, the order service, uh, we are going to make a call to the Kafka cluster whenever an order is placed, right? So for that, I'm just going to inject the Kafka template class into our order service. So I'm going to type in private final Kafka template. And just below the call to the order repository dot save method, I'm going to type in Kafka template dot send. And the send method contains different text, different arguments. So what we are going to do is we're going to use this argument, which contains the topic as a, which takes the first, the topic name as the first argument and the actual data we want to send as the second argument. So I'm going to select this method and we are going to send the message to a topic with name as notification topic and here we want to send out the order number we want to send out the order number as a message to the queue so that in the notification service we will understand what is the order number which was created right so for this reason instead of sending out the order number like this like order dot get number what we can do is we can create a new class called as an order placed event and send out this um, object as a JSON message right so for this what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new package called as event and inside this package, I'm going to create a new class called as order placed event, right? And uh, this is going to be just a plain Pooja class. So I'm just going to add the data annotation and allox constructor, no aux constructor. And this is going to be, and this is going to contain just one field. And I'm going to type in private string order number back to our class order service class i'm going to wrap this order number with the new order placed event object so let's pass this order number as a constructor argument and now what kafka template will do is it will send this order placed event object as a message to the notification topic. So if you observe this method call Kafka template dot send that we are getting a warning from IntelliJ that we can, we are making an unchecked call to this send method, right? So if you observe the Kafka template class, I'm just going to hold control and click on this Kafka template class so that it will open the sources. And you can see that this Kafka template class accepts two generic arguments k and key and value and we did not define this key value pair uh, when actually defining the kafka template variable so for that we can define the key and value pair as string and the order placed event 
Why these two? Because we are providing the notification topic as a string and we are providing this order placed event as a value. So this topic name is going to be string, which is a key and the order placed event is going to be the value. So let's update this Kafka template declaration with the key value pair. So I'm just going to type in string as the first key argument and the order placed event as the second generic argument as the value, right? And uh, we can also define the notification topic as the default topic for our order service, right? So if you want to send multiple uh, messages to Kafka, so instead of typing this notification topic, for every message we are going to send, we can define this notification topic as a default topic. So that Spring Boot will understand that we have to always send the messages unless we explicitly provide a different topic name. So Spring Boot will understand that it should always send the messages to this notification topic. So we can do that by going to the application.properties file and we have to add the property spring.kafka dot template default topic as the notification topic. And other than that, we also have to provide information to our Spring Boot project, how to you know, serialize these, uh, these key and value pair when sending to the Kafka broker, right? So we have, so we can define some serializers through Spring Kafka project. So I'm going to add a property called as spring.kafka dot producer dot key serializer and we are going to provide the serializer class as or Apache Kafka common serialization dot string serializer. Uh, so using this particular property Spring Boot will understand how we have to serialize this particular key and send it to the Kafka broker. So likewise we also have to define the serializer for the value that is the order placed event. So by default uh, it's okay that it's okay like if we send this order placed event as a JSON object. Right. So to be able to convert this Java object into a JSON, we also have to define the serializer. So for that, I'm going to add the property spring.kafka.producer.value serializer as JSON serializer class, which is coming from org spring framework Kafka support dot serializer package. Right. So that's all we need to do to configure our order service. So now let's conf so now let's go ahead and create the consumer, which is the notification service and configure the that service with Kafka. All right. So now let's go ahead and create the notification service uh, project notification service module in our project. So for that we need the starting code. So so for that I'm going to open the star.spring.io website and I'm going to generate one Spring Boot project. So I'm going to use the group ID as comprogramming.techie, artifact ID as notification service, and I'm going to use Java 17 and packaging as jar. And I'm going to add some dependencies here. The first one is going to be Lombok, and we are also going to use Spring Web. Lastly, we're also going to use Spring for Apache Kafka. So I'm just going to search for Kafka and add this dependency. Now I'm going to copy the pom.xml because that's what I need to create the service. So I'm just going to click on Explore and just copy everything, copy all the information right from the properties until the end of this pom.xml. Right. So I'm going to copy this whole code and I'm going to go back to my IDE. Now I'm going to create a new module. So this is going to be a Maven module. So I'm going to, I've already uh, shown you the process of creating a module. So I'm just going to not explain this one more time. So I'm going to click on next. I'm going to call this as a notification service and make sure you have the parent as microservice new and uh, not any other project. So, or else if you select, for example, uh, order service, it will create this notification service inside the order service. So we don't want that. So that's why I make sure you select the module as microservices new and the artifact and coordinates and the version is fine. So I'm just going to click on finish, click on add. 
So this will create a new module inside our microservices new project. So let's verify whether this module is added correctly by opening the pom.xml and let me close this annoying pop-ups and inside the modules stack you can see that our notification service module is added successfully so i'm going to go back to the pom.xml of the notification service and in here i'm just going to paste the code which i copied from the star.spring.io website right so I think we don't need the property stack. I can just copy this java.version. I can. I think I don't need the property stack as it's already there inside the pom.xml. Here we are providing the java.version. So let's add this property inside the original tag and I'm going to remove the property stack and click on this load maven changes icon. So now let's go ahead and also build some Java classes inside our notification service module. So inside the source main Java package directory and I'm going, uh, so inside the source main Java directory, I'm going to right click and create a package called as com programming.techie. And in here we need to create the notification service application class which is the main spring boot application entry point class so for that i'm just going to create a class called notification service application class i'm going to add it to the git repository and instead of typing out the code i can just use the star.spring.io website to copy the initial version of this notification service application class. So I'm just going to copy everything inside the class here. Go back to my IDE and paste this inside the class, right? So now we have the Spring Boot application class up and running. Now what I need to do here is to have to define a Kafka listener inside this project so i'm going to do this inside the notification service application class itself i'm going to write the annotation kafka listener and this kafka listener is going to listen to the topic called as notification topic because this is the name of the topic which we gave to our order service class so if i open order service and here you can see this is the name of the topic we have configured. So I'm going to use the same name of the topic and I'm going to define a method called as public void handle notification. And this method is going to take the order placed event object as the, as the input argument, right? So for that we have to define this order placed event but we don't have this class inside our service so what i'm going to do is to create a class called as order placed event and i'm going to simply copy the existing logic of the order placed event so i'm just going to open the order service and find out where is the find out the order placed event class i'm going to just copy everything from here paste it inside this order placed event from notification service right so you may have one doubt that why i'm creating these two classes inside the order service and also the notification service but why can't we share this class between these two services in general it's recommended not to share any classes between these two services because we want to keep these services independent and clean so it's always recommended if especially if you're talking if you're trying to receive and send payloads to have your own version of these classes inside your own services and now let's go back to this order handle notification method inside the notification service application class and in here i'm just going to usually the, we wanted to send out the an email notification we want to do send out an email notification and as we are going to keep this project pretty simple i'm not going to add any business logic here you are free to do it on your own like you can add the necessary dependencies and you can try to 
you know uh, expand the functionality of this project but i'm just going to going to focus on the microservices part so i'm not going to add the logic here but i'm just going to add a log message to acknowledge that we indeed received this message inside the notification service so i'm going to make use of the slf4j annotation from lombok which uses the slf4j library to provide a logger implementation so i'm going to add the log messages as log dot info received notification for order and i'm going to add a placeholder for this and define the placeholder value as order placed event dot get order number right so whenever uh, a message is placed and an order placed event is raised we are going to place a message from our order service into the kafka topic and the notification service is going to listen to this kafka topic and it's going to just print out this message receive notification for the order number right so let's run this notification service now and uh, test whether everything is working fine or not and one thing i forgot to configure here is our notification service so we didn't add any application or properties file here so i'm going to do that by quickly clicking on new file application dot properties so i completely forgot to add the eureka client sleuth and zipkin support to our notification service so for that i'm going to go back to the start.spring.io website and in here i'm going to add some more dependencies the first one is going to be eureka discovery client for spring cloud discovery i'm going to add the dependencies for zipkin for spring sleuth cloud sleuth so after adding all these three dependencies i'm going to click on explore one more time and i'm going to copy the relevant dependencies from the pom.xml starting from this spring cloud sleuth zipkin spring cloud starter netflix eureka client and finally spring cloud starter sleuth so i'm going to copy these three dependencies paste them inside the pom.xml let's add this below the spring kafka dependency and click on this maven icon to load the maven changes so maven will try to download these dependencies in the background and now we are ready to add the necessary configuration inside the application dot properties file so i'm just going to drop in some configuration code here so the first one is uh, the familiar eureka client service url and the default zone i'm going to provide the same default zone i have provided for rest of the services i have to i'm going to provide the application name as notification service and we are also going to run this notification service application on a random port so that's why i provided the the server dot port as 0 and we are also going to enable the spring sleuth integration so for this the spring sleuth integration enabled is going to be true and we are also we also have to provide the url for zipkin so that it will send out the trace information to zipkin so we have provided the url of zipkin installation and we also have provided the sampler probability as one uh, as we did for the remaining services right so the one more property we have to add is to is to configure kafka in our notification service in our notification service project so for that i'm just going to make use of the property which i've defined inside the the order service so i'm going to open the application dot properties file so i'm going to copy all these four properties which i've defined inside order service and i'm going to paste them inside the notification service like this and we have to make some modifications to these properties so we have defined the serializer on the producer side because as we want to serialize this um, no key and value pair and send it uh, send it to the kafka broker and on the consumer side we have to deserialize this information right like whatever information which is coming as part of the um, as as part of the kafka broker we have to deserialize that read this information so for that we have to define a deserializer for key and value objects 
right so for that we can make use of the property spring dot kafka dot consumer instead of producer and uh, here we have to provide the key as dot key deserializer right and uh, we have to provide the name of the deserializer as string deserializer so i can select the string deserializer class here and likewise we also have to select the json deserializer json json deserializer for spring dot kafka dot consumer dot value deserializer yeah so now we are so now our spring boot application will understand how to deserialize the incoming key and value pairs that's good and one thing we also have to keep in mind here is inside our order service we are so let me go into the order service and here we are trying to serialize this order placed event with fully qualified name as com programming techie order service dot event dot order placed event right but coming to our notification service let me open this order placed event again the fully qualified class name is going to be com programming techie dot order placed event right so whenever we receive this information from product service to the notification service spring boot will not understand how to map these two different order placed events which has two different qualified names right so for that we have to provide the mapping type on side in the producer side and also the consumer side so on the producer side we will define what exactly is the type which we are sending for the order placed event and in the consumer side we will also define what is the exact um type we are expecting so for this reason i'm going to go back to the so for this i'm going to go back to the order service dot properties order service application dot properties file and i'm going to add a property called spring dot kafka dot producer dot properties and here we are providing the json type mapping as json type mapping and as part of this json type mapping we are providing one token value followed by the fully qualified class name of the body we are sending as part of the message right so the token value i have provided as some random value as event and we have provided the fully qualified class name of the order placed event class right so in this way spring boot will understand what so what is the json type mapping of the order placed event right so we also have to define this property inside the notification service so i'm going to add this property again here and this time this is going to be spring dot kafka dot consumer dot properties right and the spring json type mapping uh, should have the same token as we defined inside the you no know, order service properties file so it's going to should be the same token as event and the fully qualified class name can be the fully qualified class name of the order placed event inside the notification service so that's going to be com dot programming dot techy and followed by the class name right so it's com programming techy dot order placed event so let's verify if it is the same or not so it's com programming techy order placed event right so now spring boot will understand how to map this two different you no know, classes which is coming from two different which has two different fully qualified class names so now that's all we have to do on our order service and notification service so we can go ahead and start all these services now and test whether the functionality is working fine or not so let's go ahead and do that all right so now you may have observed that we are getting a error when starting the notification service application class so it says an illegal state exception no group id found in a consumer config container properties or kafka listener annotation a group id is required right so what this is saying is that we have to define a group id because we have to define the consumer group and also define a group id on the consumer side inside the application dot properties of the notification service project so for that i'm just going to define a arbitrary id called as notification id and i'm going to you know assign it to the key assign it to the property spring dot kafka 
dot consumer dot group ID equals notification ID right after defining this property let's you know start the notification service application one more time and this time this uh, application this class should be starting successfully without any errors and uh, let's see like yeah it looks like our application has started successfully and you can see that we have adding the log message adding newly assigned partitions notification topic right so it's subscribed to this notification topic so that's good now let's try to place an order so i'm going to open postman and uh, first of all we need to get a new access token from keycloak so i'm going to click on this authorization tab and i'm going to scroll down and click on get new access token click on proceed so now we have the latest token and let's click on this use token button so that it will be added to this you no know, header section and uh, looking uh, at the body we have created uh, order line items with SKU code as iphone 13 and let's click on send and you can see that we got the message order placed successfully so now let's check the order service if we see any errors or not so we don't see any errors at least in the order service and in the notification service we can see a log message received notification for order and we are able to see the order id here we are able to see the order number here right so this is how we can develop the event driven applications using microservices and using the kafka message broker so i hope you learned something new and in the next part we will go ahead and dockerize all our services using docker compose and in the subsequent part we will you know migrate this docker compose to kubernetes and then also refactor the architecture to suit to kubernetes right so i will see you in the next video until then happy coding techies